look, it's another controversial hell of a boss video. <laughs> Yay. So I've learned and come to terms with the fact that you can't really talk about Hell of a Boss without talking about the Hell of a Boss and Hasbin Hotel fandom. They do have a kind of cohabitation thing going because the fandom has to do a lot to fix the writing in this show. And if you dare to say anything bad about the show, fans usually explain away the problems by giving me fan theories and that that's great but it's still fan theories, they're not canon. And nothing I say is meant to be offensive toward the creators or the fans. I'm just a sarcastic arsehole. I mean, I even put a disclaimer on my video about Blitz and Stolz's relationship, telling the fandom that I'm not attacking Vivsy Pop or the fans themselves. Yeah, I rattled the bee's nest again. Seems to be a habit for me. I firmly believe and have said before that the fandom for this universe has done a lot to help fill in the holes of this universe Vivsy Pop has created. Fandoms are, of course, what makes a show more enjoyable because you're interacting with people who love the show just as much as you do and can get into pretty deep and heated discussions about the show's lore. To be fair though, you could say this for literally any fandom ever. In my opinion, Hell of a Boss has some of the most problematic writing I've seen in a show for a long time. And the fan theories that people come up with do help to fix the problems the show has, but I do feel that a fandom should not be relied on to essentially write the show for you. Which is what I feel is happening with this show. As I said before, when you have to watch or read supplemental material like podcasts or tweets from the creators themselves to get any canonical answers to questions about the basic world building or a writer has to tweet to explain away an inconsistency. Like in episode 5 of season 1, the show states Moxie grew up in the Wrath Circle. The Harvest Moon is a very special occasion. It's been my annual duty to showcase it in the Ring of Wrath. Wrath, huh? My employees are from there. I don't think sensitive thespian types would last very long in the games. I was born here too. I have some fat in me. Same as Millie, but then in episode 3 of season 2, it shows he grew up in the greed circle. Now don't worry, it's just some fancy schmuck from greed wanting to do business with us. I hate this place. Oh yeah, this is your old stomping ground, isn't it, Mox? I grew up just over there. There's my boy. Get over here and give your daddy a hug. Daddy? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, whenever you notice something like that, a wizard did it. In the pilot, Moxie is shown to be a character who is frustrated with his job, makes it clear to Blitz how he feels about how he runs the company, pointing out the flaws of the company itself as well as how incompetent he thinks Luna is. We can't afford a billboard, sir. I don't need any reminding, sir, considering you blew most of our salaries on an obnoxious TV ad last week. I'm sorry, a commercial jingle is not comparable to musical theater. Nobody actually likes the jingles. I liked it. Do not, do not agree with him in front of me. I'd like to go on record and say that incident was Luna's fault. Dispatch is supposed to give us the right info on the target. Do your job! Luna is a valued member of our family and we don't get rid of family. We aren't a family, sir. You are the boss. We are the employees. You treat her like she's some troubled teenager. She's more like a meth-addicted homeless woman you let man the phone. Just stop doing that. He expresses his feelings very easily to the point Millie has to calm him down. What you say and how you act is totally inappropriate! Calm down, Mox! You're gonna have another panic attack! I am calm! There, there. But then in the show proper, Moxie is now a total brown nose, sucking up to Blitz, blowing his chance to show how good he is at his job. He chokes when he has to kill the murder family's mother, causing Blitz to get shot instead, and Millie has to remind him that he's a weapons expert when they're stuck in the basement in episode 5 of season 1, making him shoot the lock instead of trying to break it with his hands. Because Moxie forgets about his strengths, he needs Millie to remind him of them. As Millie says in episode 1, he has a fuzzy head and does need to be pointed in the right direction sometimes. I think I just needed a minute to process. You have a good heart, honey. Just a fuzzy head. I know Moxie is meant to be a very insecure individual, but I'm getting tired of his insecurities and awkwardness being played up for laughs or for ways to further humiliate the guy. He is terrified of rejection, as is made clearer in this episode, and yet in his hallucination in episode 6 of season 1, he does say that his fear of rejection is why he keeps all his feelings inside. I'm interrupting my own rant here to 
just state how much I love the animation during the hallucination scenes in episode 6. See, I can say nice things about the show. Why, Moxie, why have you held your true feelings inside? I am scared of rejection. Except he literally doesn't do that. Out of all the characters, Moxie is the most emotional and the most expressive when it comes to how he feels. He's a friggin' musician for goodness sake. It's only in episode 3 of season 2 does he clam up as he's around his dad and his traumatic backstory is revealed in flashbacks. Can anyone say daddy issues? Hell of a Boss, as I said before in a previous video, is a very emotionally driven show and when it comes to its characters, they are very relatable and likeable and definitely the strongest part of the show, especially Moxie and Millie. Millie and Moxie are a wholesome, cute, adorable couple showing that even in hell, relationships can work. Being newlyweds in this show, having only been married for a year, as confirmed in episode 7 of season 1. It's our one year marriage anniversary. They are clearly in love with each other and content with each other, which juxtaposes the arrangement between Blitz and Stolas, which is completely transactional. Yeah, I can't bring myself to call what's going on between Blitz and Stolas a relationship. It's why Blitz is so obsessed with Moxie and Millie. Always up in their business, invading their privacy and following them on dates. Can you stop finding me and Millie outside of work? Come on, sweetie, it's not that big a deal. Excuse me. What? Why are you in our fridge? Are you f filming us right now? What you dreaming about? He wants what they have, but is also repulsed by what they have because it's a constant reminder of what he can't have or doesn't allow himself to have. But though they are a couple, they are also two individuals who are both in vital need of character development without having the other glued to the hip. Moxie has so much more character than Millie does so far as he's been given more chances to be independent from his wife and is much more proactive within his role of IMP. But anytime they are apart, all Millie seems to do is pine after Moxie or they end up having to rescue each other. Okay, to be fair, in episode 6 he was stranded in the human world with no way to get back so yeah of course Millie's gonna be worried about him. Moxie rescues Millie in episode 1 from the murder family's mother Moxie! and Millie rescues Moxie from being eaten by the giant fish and again from being killed by Striker and then has to give him a pep talk to you know help them break out of the basement that Striker throws them into. Moxie I'm fine. You just have to get out there and f up that brown nosing for me. But I can't break through it. Not with your hands baby. Use what you're good at. I'm not good with my hands. <clears throat> oh right. Yeah yeah. I probably should have used this earlier, huh? And she also saves him along with Luna's help from the demon-obsessed kooks in episode 6 of season 1, preferring to use a huge battle axe instead of a gun or a rifle. Oh, because she herself is a battle axe because she's a domineering, aggressive, sharp-tempered person. And she can break through Moxie's armor. Mmm, clever. Millie is the most hands-on when it comes to her job, preferring hand-to-hand -hand combat instead of Moxie's more stealthy style using sniper rifles or handguns. Guns. She also saves him from humiliation at Aussies and stands up to Asmodeus, of all people. I think you were trying to sing something for me, Mox. Yeah, I was. Wow, pretty ballsy. She also rescues him from being forced to marry in episode 3 of season 2. Being forced to marry a guy who so happens to be her ex as well as his ex. Do you want my husband? You're gonna have to f***ing kill me. Millie, honey, everything okay? Just bumped into an X. Oh! <laughs> what is up, party people? Chance? You know him? Ugh. You remember that X I was talking about? Looks like I have two big sex reunions today. Did you date him too? Man? Are you f***ing kidding me? There's someone who's both of you! Oh, we were so close on giving Millie an actual backstory that doesn't involve Moxie. So close! This ass is mine! Yes, love, we know. The show doesn't let us forget about it. So Millie can't even have a 
past without Moxie being involved. I mean, the show itself has Blitz point out how annoying it is that the two of them are always five feet away from each other. Do you ever honestly shut up about Millie? It's always, oh, how's Millie? I can't tonight. I'm hanging with Millie. I'm so worried about Millie. And she's always five feet away from you. It's pathetic. Have you noticed I haven't had much to say about Millie yet? At least not without mentioning Moxie. Yeah, Millie's personality and character seems to revolve around being Moxie's wife and not much else. Yeah, in episode 5 of season 1, we get a look into her background growing up on a farm, coming from a loving home with supportive parents and siblings. But even in an episode where we go to where Millie grew up, the episode still ended up being all about Moxie. Though she is impulsive and incredibly sadistic when it comes to her job, her competitiveness is understandable seeing how many siblings she has and how they tend to rile her up. Wish I could play. How come Sally Mae still gets to compete? Your sister doesn't have a neighborhood head count. She so does. It doesn't count if they don't find the body. You don't need my parents to respect you. They will eventually. No, they won't. What? I'm right, ain't I? How pissed would you be if I bet on him dying? It's good to see that her impulsive, sadistic nature can be channeled into protecting Moxie. As he points out, Millie has strength enough for the both of them. You know, she protected me. Millie has the strength enough for both of us. Sadly, when the two of them did finally get an episode that makes them the main focus, episode 5 of season 2 took all the problems of the narrative that this couple already had and amplified it to 11, turning Moxie into a bratty teenager and Millie into a Mary Sue. We all know how I feel about Mary Sues. Really? Do you want to talk about it? Oh yeah, of course I do, because I'm sure you're the best therapist ever. Ever. Well, yeah, but I don't think you could afford me. So why do I think episode 5 of season 2 ruined Moxie and Millie? Not going to lie, this episode was very entertaining, but considering how episode 4 ended, I was expecting episode 5 to continue where episode 4 left off with Stolas in the hospital and Blitz coming to the realization that Stolas can in fact get hurt. I made another video about Blitz and Stolas which goes into their arrangement in more detail, but this is the thing about this series. It can't seem to decide whether it's an episodic dark comedy or a supernatural drama with season-long story arcs. It just drops plot threads and expects the audience to just be okay with it. Episode 5 feels like total filler to me and I kept asking why Stolas isn't being brought up at all. This episode also ruined any wholesomeness that Moxie and Millie had by showing them having sex on stage in front of a crowd full of minors. And you are? Your brother Miller. I like sports and Bitches. You know, these kids are a bit younger than I was expecting. Maybe lose that last part. Check. You know, these kids are a bit younger than I was expecting. But again, as I said in the previous video, I'm ace, so what do I know? Regardless of who's in the crowd, this was still super gross. Oh, but it doesn't matter. They're imps from hell. No one cares, right? This episode should have been a chance for Moxie to prove he could run IMP better than Blitz ever could. But instead, we have him dress in drag, pretending to be a human teenage girl. Oh, hang on. No. Pretending to be a deliberate parody of poorly written teenage girls. I'm the prettiest girl at my school, and all the boys want me. My favorite color is hot pink. Because normal pink is so basic. I like horses, puppies, fast cars, jewelry, and I got my first period last year, and it was so heavy. I guess I'm just more mature than your typical preteen. So, you want to be friends? Oh my god, like that is so annoying. Like I hate how he talks, like every sentence is a question. And like how annoying that would be to have to listen to like all the freaking time. Like oh my god, can you imagine? It must be freaking torture. And don't get me started on what he said about pink. Every single shade of pink, awesome. No such thing as a basic pink. Like seriously, Maddie, can you imagine listening to a voice that's so annoying like that all the time? Also, what's a period? Moxie and Millie also completely forget that they were there to do a job and he accuses Millie of doing exactly that when he not only did that himself but also completely sidestepped away from the target that Millie pointed out. Instead of it being about getting the job done, it became instead about Moxie proving to himself and others that his way was the right way, even if it took him longer to get the job done. Just handle it yourselves. You got it, sir! 
We'll take the case. This is going to be the cleanest, most well-prepped, most surgical hit we've ever had. He refuses to listen to Millie and instead chooses to act out his role of Moxine, a character he invented and pretended to be in order to be undercover in the camp, which they did not need to do. Max, are you sure this isn't a little much? It's my first lead, Mills. It has to be perfect. Hey, Max! Check out that shady looking fella over there. I think that's our guy. That's definitely him. That bag's full of money and drugs and what looks like a drill one would use to poke holes in a boat. But, but that's all circumstantial at best. Now he's looking around and heading into that locked boathouse we heard about. That would be the perfect place to... Fine, Max. We'll do your way. It becomes a popularity contest instead of them trying to do their job. And the two of them argue because Millie is getting all the attention that Moxie wants and she even solves the mystery of who the murderer is right off the bat, making the story drag out pointlessly where more screen time should have been given to Blitz's story instead, which I talked about in my previous video. Moxie is delighted to be given the chance to prove himself as a competent and reliable part of the company. We don't typically do investigations. I'll have to check with the boss. Uh, pardon moi, sir. Not now, Moxie. Sir, there's a client who needs us to investigate his death. Handle it yourself. You got it, sir. Gonna be honest, Moxie, not too bad for your first solo mission. <gasps> really, sir? No, no, not really. You're a See what I mean about brown nosing? This episode had a promising start with Moxie and Millie taking on a job where they have to investigate a murder as well as carry out an assassination. This was a very promising and interesting concept to me. Have Moxie and Millie work together to solve a murder mystery and then assassinate the murderer themselves, allowing an entire episode to focus on them not just as a wholesome couple but as two individuals who also work together. It could have parodied so many classic murder mystery series like Murder She Wrote or Columbo or even Miss Marple. Imagine watching Miss Marple solve a murder and instead of the murderer being carted off by police, Miss Marple just screams like a banshee and murders them. <laughs> you know what? I would genuinely watch the hell out of something like that. Yeah, you really need therapy. This could have, and in my opinion, should have been a murder mystery episode, showing how smart, intelligent, and calculative Moxie is. It also could have been a perfect chance to have Millie in a scenario where she has to learn to withhold her sadistic tendencies and wait for a kill while also helping Moxie solve the murder as well as carry out the assassination. And maybe even have Moxie in a situation where his sound-mindedness is tested by Millie's impulsiveness, which is probably why the two of them are so attracted to each other. Moxie is a sensitive, creative soul who expresses himself through his love of music. Even his outfit is like a conductor, and his hallucination in episode 6 has heavy references to Phantom of the Opera. Even their apartment is decorated with stuff that is seemingly from Phantom of the Opera. Having an episode focused primarily on Moxie and Millie was something the show was in vital need of, and I felt that the side plot of Blitz looking for his sister deserved its own episode. In fact, this whole episode felt like it was trying to do far too much. It felt like two episodes kind of squished together into one, changing what felt needed to be the A plot with Blitz finding his sister into the B plot, which was such an anti-climax I honestly felt cheated. And seeing Moxie, the weapons expert of IMP, go after his kill with just a dagger instead of an actual gun or rifle felt so out of character to me. Their relationship is sweet and wholesome. It just sucks that this exists in a show that doesn't support it narratively or give Millie any character development outside of being Moxie's wife. And the one time she does get character development, she's pretending to be someone else. Though when Moxie sings to Millie and Aussies, there is a lot of shuddering. Clearly their sort of loving relationship is unusual. Or it was just pointing out how cheesy and cringy Moxie's performance was, but it also emphasizes how much neither of them care what others think of them. They don't have to pretend to like to do things they don't. Though it would be nice if the show was able to have their female characters have some development without relying on the male character stories all the time. Yeah, yet again, I'm nitpicking, but what do you guys think? Did this episode ruin Moxie and Millie? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Mad Munchkin, stay creative. <laughs>